Welcome back to the Marvel Movie Minute, a daily podcast in which we disassemble a film from the Marvel Cinematic Universe into one-minute segments and then examine it in obsessive and occasionally hilarious detail. I'm Kyle Olson from the Swashbuckling Ladies Debate Society podcast. Hey, and I'm Rob Cabosco and Kyle. Yes, sir. Your favorite movie featuring Russians. Oh, favorite movie featuring Russians. This is difficult question to be asking to me. Now, for me, it's now here's the thing. Because there's a movie on this list, I'm going to just admit it, because I've, I have been told since I was in sixth grade mm-hmm. by my sixth grade social studies teacher, Miss Rava. I, okay. Hello, Miss Rava. If Miss Rava is out there listening, I love Miss Rava. She always said I needed to see Dr. Zhivago. Oh, interesting. I've never and, seen Dr. Zhivago. And I, and I need to see it too. Now, the problem is because it's like a three and a 45 minute movie, three hour, 45 minute movie. It, it's a. I got to put aside a day, right? Yeah. So I still got to see that, and that's. And I oh. definitely, obviously, need to see it. So, but you're, it's still, still on your list from high oh, school. Oh, it's I'm still on my list. Yes, in sixth okay. grade. That's okay. Oh, sixth grade. Okay. I've disappointed wow. her clearly. Um, but I'm going to tell you something. I have a really interesting pool of my, and this is my personal favorite movie that I could think of involving Russians. Okay. Well, let me do mine because it's just off the top of my head. It's, For the, it's not. It's not Indiana Jones and the Crystal Skull. It's, it's not. Okay. Good. I, my my thing that came to mind when you were saying that, uh, just at the top of my head, would be Red Heat, starring Arnold oh. Schwarzenegger. Oh, and, and Jim Belushi. Yes. Wow. <laughs> I did not see that coming. That's okay. Right. Back, back when they tried, they had they were finding all sorts of ways to explain why Arnold had an accent. Uh, yes, he's Russian. Okay. <laughs> all right. Well, that's oh, that's a good pick. Okay. All right, that's not bad. All all right. What you got? Mine, mine is, and it and it amazingly has a great part to play in minute two. Mm. The 1997 The Saint with Val Kilmer and Elizabeth Shue. Oh, that's a good pull. I love, and I absolutely love that movie. I think yeah. I may have mentioned it in a previous season because I wouldn't be surprised. There was a cell phone in that movie that featured that I actually ended up getting. It was a that's right. Yeah, we talked about that because I've we talked about, about the, the Matrix right. phone too. So I made the, yeah. So we, we've talked about this. But yeah. I just love that movie. I think it is between that and Tombstone. I think my two favorite films with Val Kilmer. I would put that at number three because after Tombstone for me would be Top Secret, but then oh. The Saint. Okay, and then so The Saint. Good. Oh. He's so good in Top Secret. No, just I just I just love everything about it. Elizabeth Shue is so yeah. wonderful. That's one of those lost '90s gems. There's some yes. great movies there that just people they they just they they popped and then disappeared and nobody ever talks about it. The Saint and is, was, is good and great music. Yes. Oh, the whole movie. If you haven't seen The yeah. Saint, and I know it's tried to been remade in the show. No, watch the '97 The yes. Saint with Val Kilmer. Mm-hmm. It's absolutely fantastic and. When I realized who else is in that movie, and then I saw this minute, it brought a tear to my heart. That's right, so. because we're not here to talk about The Saint specifically. Oh, no. We're here to talk about Iron Man 2 from 2010, directed by John Favreau. Uh, and, but in this case, we have uh, an actor uh, who has happened to be in both of them. But we haven't got there yet, because he is not the first character, brand new character for Iron Man 2. No, the first char- brand new character in Iron Man 2 is Irina the Cockatoo. <gasps> That's right. Oh, there she is. Oh, I'm going to hold Irina. on. Irina. We're trying to record the podcast, Irina. I, I cut it. I cut it halfway. Down. She... <laughs> but once so again, yes, just like Ricky the dog, we have Irina the Cockatoo. And now two marks. We've gotten two appearances of the Boyd, the Boyd. in the movie. That's two right. for two. Uh, so this this arena uh, character, uh, she is played by actually two different birds. So in this case, she's being played by a, a cockatoo named Elvis. Later on, uh, we will meet a different cockatoo, the actor. Uh, but in this case, uh, Elvis is playing Arena. And so and none of you knew it was actually a male bird playing a female bird. So, I mean, shout out to Elvis. I mean, he really committed to this role. Okay. I okay. I didn't know. I I knew the other story about the other. Yeah, we'll actor. talk about. We'll talk about. Is, the was other. that? Do we still use animal the actor, actor yeah. for animal? Oh, animal yep, actor. Animal okay. actor. Yeah. Okay, so I know that. We'll save that for later. But mm-hmm. okay, yep. so this is Elvis portraying Irina, yep. the cockatoo. Yes. Wow. So we see uh, Irina apparently is not interested in Tony Stark's press conference. Could not be bothered to even watch what's going on. So it's interestingly, as you watch this, because this is basically just footage from the press conference from Iron Man One. 
uh, that they have they've cut together, and then they put like a Russian, you know, like the the Chirons are Russian, and the translation you can hear like a, a Russian translator because uh, it's happening live. That's how we know this is November twenty fifth, two thousand and nine, in the MCU. But it's also a little bit unusual because in the middle of this press conference, they cut away to a shot of the front row of the reporters because why like what news like the, the cameras are in the back because you want to focus on tony stark who's making a big announcement not like a oh, random reporter in the front row no that's Weird. not true no that happens Come that on. happens at press conferences no absolutely you have pull cameras that are on stage and they actually get shots back looking at the audience it happens in the white house pressing room it, it yes it, that it happens be because there's a, a an actress in the front row that uh, had played a role in the first iron man so they want to make sure they get her on screen Okay, technically, <laughs> it's a it's a weird. Cut. I mean, like you know, if it's a news conference coming from a news crew, you think it would be focusing on Tony Stark. Okay, I hope I hope there. your criticisms are far deeper than this because this <laughs> no, this is, is like that's that's a softball. Okay, because that's just you're grazing just on the surface. <laughs> this is not it. This happens yeah, maybe not okay. in the way it's portrayed here, but yeah, I mean, yeah. you know what? That's interesting. You do bring yeah. that up though. They couldn't have. Well, I guess they didn't have the footage. Well, maybe they did, but they were just like, "Yeah, just pull the footage just from the movie." It. Yeah, exactly. Just the yeah, just just pull the full the whole just sequence. Put it up there. Get it? All right. No B roll. Uh, no, not at no. all. And we are just seeing this is a uh, interesting to see too. Um, this is just a this is a standard definition CRT mm-hmm. TV. Yep. Uh, so that's obviously cropped and everything, but you know it's Russian newscast. Yeah, they're doing whatever they got to do. Uh, so we then cut to our first new human character for Iron Man 2, and uh, this is Anton Vanko. Oh, and so for those of you who are comic book fans, you might recognize that name because Anton Vanko is actually the Crimson Dynamo. <gasps> Which I would not have known unless I didn't listen to our bonus episode. Yeah. So a few weeks this ago. is, say, I uh, say, I, I'm going to have some criticism as the movie goes along, but I got to say, this was a pretty good idea. Like you actually take a real existing character and then have it be that you then introduce the son as a new character. But like having this name, I think you can kind of go, maybe he actually did do some of the stuff and we just never got to see it. Uh, so uh, for those uh, who are not uh, become fans or did not follow our advice and listen to our comic book episode, uh, Anton Vanko, uh, he was the Crimson Dynamo. The Crimson Dynamo is basically the Russian Iron Man. It's, he has full red armor because Russia. Uh, so his story is in the 1960s is when the story was written. So of course, Marvel is always taking place now, but then it was written in like 63, 64. Uh, so it was happening then. So this was during the USSR kind of time. So the Crimson Dynamo was sent to steal Iron Man's technology uh, from Tony Stark, because Tony Stark was the, not, not his father. Um, but uh, he failed to defeat Iron Man, and so instead of uh, trying to slink back and maybe possibly be killed by his Russian handlers, he said, uh, I defect! And so he joined the U.S. and actually ended up working with Tony Stark, and the two of them became, eh, not, I mean, not friends, but colleagues. Uh, but Russia, being the, you know, the United Soviet Socialist Republic, was not going to let him go, so they sent their one of their fiercest warriors to bring him back. They deployed the Black Widow. And Boris. <laughs> it's like there's just another guy. Like they send Black Widow and a guy named Boris to bring him back. Uh, so there's a, a big fight breaks out and, uh, and Anton actually sacrifices himself to save Tony Stark. He takes a laser blast to the chest and then he dies. Um, so obviously a very different story than what we're going to, uh, to see in here. But uh, the Crimson Dynamo uh, legacy has passed on to many, uh, many other Russians uh, over the course of the comic book lore. Uh, but he was the first. I did see, though, after reading the, the comic book uh, mm-hmm. that you had, had recommended, I think this is a great pool. Like, I do yeah, really, it really is. I, that I how it connects and how you'll learn here in the next few seconds how it connects even more even throughout this movie. I think it's just a. This was a great way to again integrate the history of these characters in a way that one gives tribute to them, but also tells a new story that is different. Yeah, well I agree. I agree. Now, and they found a fantastic actor to yes. portray Anton Banco, even though it's a very small role, very small. You know, he only gets one scene, uh, but they found this guy. So his name is. Let's see, now, once again, I'm going to struggle with the Russian. They he's known as Eugene by most of the people who worked with him, but Yevgeny Lazarev. 
was his name. Oh yeah. Oh, you did the hard uh, G. I, that was. I good. tried. Yeah. No, that's <laughs> so I tried probably to get as close it. as I could because he is actually Russian. He was born that's in Russia. Um, see, he has seventy-eight credits on IMDb. Uh, he did roles on West Wing, which yes. already like puts you in the the royalty of actors. If you can if you can hang on West Wing, Alias Twenty Four ER, and just for variety's sake, Reno Nine One One. Uh, and also for movies, uh, including uh, Some of All Fears and, as previously mentioned, The Saint. Yes. And for those of you of a younger generation, he was also in Call of Duty Modern Warfare. The first oh. one, the great one that everybody loves. Oh, that's I yeah. didn't realize that. Right. So and but wait, there's more. This this is this is what I why I love doing this show is because. You, we find out weird trivia stuff, maybe like some Marvel nerd lore and stuff too. But then you sometimes discover these people and I am astounded by this man's life. Yeah. So not like he came from Russia, like became an right, immigrant and he came over to the United States. Never. I mean, he was always a, a Russian citizen till, uh, till the very end. Um, but became an actor which you know could not be easy coming up at the the age that he did like seeing the end of the of the the cold war and the crumbling of the the ussr uh into into what became modern day russia still acting he became a professor of the moscow art theater studio school and the theater academy of russia he was a professor of acting at the school of cinematic arts in usc wow. and he was the first actor to play Stanley Kowalski in Streetcar Named Desire on a in, on a Russian stage. Oh, Sadly, a... he's no longer with us. He died in uh, November of 2016, but enough to have an incredible, incredible legacy. But yeah. No, I as what soon as I looked at his filmography, and I always wondered why he looked familiar to me. Mm -hmm. He So in The Saint, he is President Karpov, the, the president who is basically being tricked by the villain, the antagonist in that, in that uh, film. Uh, and like you said, I mean, the West wings, fantastic, some of all fears. And then he, he has a ridiculous turn, which I can't imagine you've seen this movie. Did you ever see the pink Panther too? Which again, <laughs> could have made it. If you listen to last minute, yeah. could have made it in our list of not great sequels. With yeah. The with the two. number two. Yeah. He plays the Pope in that movie. Oh, okay. You know? <laughs> There's this ridiculous scene where the 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 tornado, some uh -huh. great cat burglar steals the Pope's ring in the middle of the night, and Steve Martin and yeah, that's um, right. That's, the, that's the, this is the Steve Martin pink. The, oh, this is the Steve Martin Sports. versions. Yeah, and they come. Oh, it's not good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but what a just no, what an incredible life. Yeah. Um, it, it, just in acting, and also, like you said, I mean, his contributions to ed education and the study of theater yeah. and, and and acting itself. Um, and uh, you know, amusingly, he when he died, he like you said in 2016, he died mm -hmm. in Moscow. Yeah. So yeah. no, I mean, uh, great tribute to him. This is just was wonderful to see him and wonderful to to reminisce about his roles and his contribution to acting. Yeah, he's um, it has very little time on screen but i think like really really does a great job with the amount of stuff he does because i mean basically his job is to die right exactly. uh, but he really makes you feel sort of the pathos of it just in a few lines he has so he's calling for ivan 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 he's calling down the hall so as the camera then moves down the hallway uh we see ivan turn around and it's mickey rourke <gasps> so mickey rourke is a fascinating actor um, I, it's interesting that they, they chose him for this role because there's a lot of parallels between him and Robert Downey Jr. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of meta casting going on here that two had not really worked together before. And uh, not, not, not that I had, not that I'd seen that uh, maybe they, they had passed in the night or whatever, but they both had a similar checkered past, I guess it would be, right. and, and had sort of stepped away from acting and came back. Now, Mickey Rourke, his story is fascinating because he has basically two obsessions, two things that he was really good at, and he could never choose between the two of them, and that's acting and boxing. So he's, his whole life has, has gone between those two negative and positive poles, just b bouncing back and forth. Uh, so he was born in New York, grew up in Florida, and uh, that's where he learned about boxing and actually became a professional. And then uh, for whoever wrote his IMDb thing, 
they are really obsessed with his boxing career because they really, really break it down by like numbers and stats and who he fought and when and all this kind of stuff. I was like, <laughs> okay, like that, I'm, that's great, but like, why is that on his IMDb profile? Because okay, but uh, that's but who he is, yeah, it's, it's it's who he is. is. And so he had, uh, so he had, he had, uh, like since he was since he was I think from twelve he'd been boxing, and so by the time he got to college, he was sort of like done with it for a while. And so a friend asked him to be in a college play. Uh, he did and decided, wait, oh my God, I love acting. <laughs> this is amazing. And so you're like, okay, sure. Some boxer guy decided to be acting. No, no, no. Uh, he went to the actor studio in New York and auditioned for them and got in. At that time, that right. is amazing. I mean, the, and supposedly he gave one of the best auditions they'd ever seen. And like the actor studio was hard to get into back in that time they are the cream they were the cream of the crop uh at the time this is like inside the actor studio this is that actor studio but this is you know back in the the 60s 70s um so uh his first uh major role was for mr steven spielberg in 1941 and what's interesting about this is like he kind of came out of nowhere for most people but like in the 70s he was huge like yeah. He yeah. was a major, major movie star and a sex symbol. Right. Like he was like for I'd say probably five years, he was probably one of the the top ten actors in Hollywood. Like wanted by everyone. Use you know he was there. But then the other obsession came back to him, and he went back to boxing. So <laughs> he and like I say, and he from what I'm told, he is a very, very good boxer. Uh, but part of being a boxer is taking a lot of punches to the face. So uh, that whole sex symbol thing didn't really happen because uh, he really got beaten up a lot. Uh, so he's had a lot of reconstructive surgery. I mean, he's split his tongue. He's broken both his cheeks. I mean, he's had a lot of, of, of damage done to his face. So when he made his comeback, then he really looked like he had lived a life because he had. Oh no, hard uh, life. I mean, yeah. Definitely, so and, it's, and he's right. and and like I say, I, I like like we talked about Robert Downey Jr. I don't really want to talk about controversy kind of stuff. He yeah. so just like RDJ, um, you know, he had he made some bad choices. He right. went through some terrible times and he he did some bad things, whatever. But then he really pulled himself together and made a choice of like getting his life straight. And so then he made a big comeback in Darren Aronofsky's The Wrestler. Uh, so that was a, a major one that ev it blew everybody away. Have you seen that movie? Uh, parts of it. I actually still, I, I had to see the whole thing. I've seen it when it was on different like streaming services and parts. it's tough. It's oh, I mean, it's, like it's, it's his, a hard watch. His role yeah. is, is, I mean, he's, he does a fantastic job in it, but like there's, as we're wrestling fans, right? Right. But there are some parts of wrestling we don't like to think about, and oh, this no, movie focuses on all that. It's a rough life. It is a rough there's, life. There's there's walking out and the and the pyro hits and your music right. goes and you're and you're slamming dudes through tables, and then there's thirty years later when yeah. you're sitting behind a card table, right. barely able to stand, and right. you know begging for uh, any kind of and there's because there, there's no retirement plan for wrestlers, and this no. so this is this is the sort of that dark side of it. Um, so and, and and obviously then all of Hollywood went whoa like where have you been oh and one more note about the the wrestler uh, do you know who he was trained by you're gonna like this part oh it was it wasn't the Hearts was it who no he was trained by uh, Arthur Afa Anoa'i one of the Wild Samoans oh that's right also also you know that, that has a connection to Rocky Johnson who right. would go to uh, you know his son Dwayne Johnson, Dwayne Johnson. Uh, <laughs> went on to become notable rikishi um, those are all that the yeah, whole that's that, that whole, whole family, family yeah. yes uh so uh from from the the wrestler he got a bafta award he got a golden globe he got an independent spirit award and even an oscar nomination so yeah to, like now he's he's sort of now become like a footnote he's still out there working and stuff too but like nobody really talks about him but at this time he was as white hot of a property as terrence howard was when iron man one happened right like coming straight off of a really popular movie. Everybody is, is uh, like, he's back on top. So getting him for this was kind of a big deal, like for an Iron Man movie, which once again, they had made one and everybody kind of went, okay, but what else you got? You know, they really had a lot to prove. And so getting him was a big deal. Um, and well, it's an we'll, interesting we'll, see, year. we'll see how it goes along. Right. As, as no, it's see, an interesting but... uh, year for him, those years for him, because, 
Okay, if all I remember, my first my first memory of Mickey Rourke, uh, Mickey Rourke is, and not because I saw the movie because I was certainly too young at this, but was in 1986, nine and a half weeks. Yes, because nine and a half weeks, that movie was incredibly talked about in pop culture because it was scandalous. It was, you know, I mean, I'm trying to think what the equivalent. So that I remember that I had the exact same reaction because everybody was like, "Oh, that's the movie you can't see," and then right. like. Basic Instinct kind of got that title. Right. I can't think of anything that's come since then that has been like in that same vein. Uh, wild things you could probably. I guess say. wild things. Yeah, I wild mean, like they, they 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 don't make erotic thrillers anymore. Yeah, so. no, not no, no, no. Mm-hmm. This was the, oh, this was and you're, and you're right. Nine and a half weeks and um, what's the other one? You the 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 um, other movie? You a basic Instinct. Basic Instinct, of course. Yeah, yeah. no, Basic Instinct. About ten years later, too. I forgot about that sequel. Yeah, well, (laughs) another one. So anyway, no, this that was he was known for that, and then yes, and then of course you know he he has several battles in his own personal life, Mm -hmm. and then when the wrestler comes out in '08, I mean, changed everything, and just that was it. But it's funny, is like okay, so he's like you said, he's white hot. In Mm -hmm. 2010, do do you know the other movie that he was in in 2010? I don't. The Expendables. Oh, yeah. And once again, that movie was like hugely celebrated too. Like everybody was like, oh my God. How did you get all these people in the same movie? Yeah. What's happening? So he, look at he was white hot, but yeah. he also cashed in, I think, quite oh, a bit, yeah. which to his credit. I mean, yeah. like, that's what you're right. Do. I mean, you got to strike while the iron is hot. Right, exactly. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, no, but, in- but interesting to see him here now. Look, he is, <laughs> he is grizzled. This yes. is, this is, he is done up to. I, I what I get from this scene, especially when you see him, then then he comes back to his father, which you kind of get you understand this relationship and these characters back to the movie. Yeah, this is a hard life. Yeah, right where they are, yeah, whatever they've gonna, been through. We're going to learn a lot more hard. about about what happened to him, but you can just see, you know, right. the the years and and was and obviously where they are too. I mean, like this is a ramshackle place. You can see their naked bulbs on the wall. Always right. a, a <laughs> quick sign of things are not going well in your life. Um, but you do get that there's a lot of a technology. We yep. didn't uh, behind the television. There is a large rack of various audiovisual components. Right. So immediately, what you've gotten is is that okay? These are these are people that are living a rough life, but they're into stuff. They're tech. They're technical in some way because they have all this equipment, right? Right. And then you have what is a very simple conversation in Russian mm-hmm. between the two characters. That's right. And like yeah, so, uh, uh, Anton is. Uh, laying in bed, obviously not doing well. Uh, he's pointing at Tony Stark on the screen saying, that should be you. It's like, mm. well, that's, well, that's odd. Why would he say something like that? And then um, basically, you know, Ivan doesn't want to have uh, even pay attention to that. He says, don't listen to that crap. And then, but his father is still continuing on. And he says, I'm sorry. All I can give you is my knowledge. So of course, that line is kind of cut off. We see the, the, the uh, subtitles say that. And that's exactly where the minute ends. We're actually not going to hear him say that until the next minute. Right. Uh, but yeah, we can see that uh, things have not gone well for, for these two wow. in Moscow. It's, it's kind of a bummer. I yeah, know. well, this is, I mean, yeah, I'd say it's, it's, it, we are uh, establishing that uh, not everything is uh, bright and shiny as it is in Tony Stark's world. On the yeah. other side, Interesting. Know, uh, I like that. things are a little yes. grim and gritty. So, All right. So far, so good. Yeah, so that that's it for minute two. Uh, so we'll be back to a uh, minute three to to see the continuing on of the the uh, father son connection. Uh, in the meantime, if you're enjoying what you hear, uh, you can do something very kind for us. You can leave us a review. That's right. On all of the pod catchers, there are ways to go in and say uh, like, "Hey, this is this is a lot of fun. We're doing, they're doing a good job. I really like what's going on." I know it's early, but you know. <laughs> give us a you know like we've we've done a lot of these before so maybe uh you you you, you like decided to skip the hulk and go right to iron man uh, all right like uh, how about uh giving us a couple stars just for uh jumping over all that stuff yeah i don't think I it's mean, a lot to ask you know you, you're listening you're entertained you know where this is going right. it's gonna be amazing okay right. give it another week give it another week. <laughs> sure. that's right five stars for arena yeah huh? oh no, too soon. Too soon. Too okay. Soon. <laughs> because I'm just gonna. <laughs> I'm just gonna be the boy. And then, that's, I can't do that. I'm board. done. Let's. We're done. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no more board. So, all right. Thank you all for listening. We'll see you back here for minute three of Iron Man two.
Nuff said. Bye.